Hello all, welcome to the what's new video for ONI 0.3.4. Thanks for tuning in and checking out what we've been working on. It's been a while since we had our last what's new video, so there's a lot to cover. All right, so our first new feature actually just showed up here when I started the editor. If you notice, uh, this notification popped up and ONI saw that I have an init vim, but it's not configured to load by default. So this notification is a call to action asking me if I want to opt in to loading my init vim. This is really nice because before I'd have to jump into the config file, wade through the wiki to figure this out. But now it's right at my fingertips when I launch. You might be asking a couple questions when you see this though. Number one, why is this not just the default? Number two, this looks uh, really gooey-ish. Are you gonna make me use the mouse? So for number one, there's still cases where init vim settings can cause problems or conflicts with the worst case being the editor won't load. I want the first launch, the first run to always work. If it doesn't work after loading the init vim, at least there's a point of reference on where to start looking. If we can get to the point where we can get that first launch experience guaranteed, we'll make it the default. And then for number two, are you make me use the mouse? Uh, the answer is of course not. Atkin did an awesome job integrating this new notification prompt with sneak mode. So you can press control G and use sneak mode to say yes, no, or even dismiss the dialog. Uh, this control G sneak mode is crucial to jumping around the GUI like features. So for now, uh, I'll just say yes. So it reloads uh, because I told it to pick up my init vim. I don't have a lot in my init vim, so there's nothing really visible here. And this feature is a great starting point in terms of our lowering the bar effort. My goal past this release for 0.4.0 .0 is to make configuration and plugin management simple, seamless, and intuitive. We're a long way from that today, but changes like this are bringing us closer. And the less I have to jump into my programmatic configuration, the better off I am. All right, let me turn the key displayer back on so you can see what I'm typing. Cool, it worked. So a new feature that I haven't covered yet is this tutorial pane on the sidebar that's this entry here. So I'm going to jump over to that. You can see that we now have a set of interactive tutorials here. Let me fire one up to show how it works. So we have a quick description here about what this tutorial covers, a set of goals, um, notes on the keys that you'll use for the tutorial, and an interactive pane here. One thing that's really interesting is that this is actually a full NeoVim instance embedded inside the editor. So it's sort of like NeoVim Inception because we have NeoVim on the outside and then another instance of NeoVim on the inside. The nice thing about this is I'm not really constrained to how I complete the tutorial as long as I meet the goals. So if I'm new to Vim, I might follow along exactly like it says and use H, J, K, and L to navigate around. But um, maybe I start to learn some other commands so I can uh, start to jump around a little bit faster and uh, take what I learned and try and get my keystrokes and time down for the tutorial. And for 0.3.4, we have a brand new tutorial down here, this copy paste tutorial. Thanks a lot, Kevin, for submitting that. And there's a few issues and PRs tracking some other tutorials that are in progress. So I'm really looking forward to those and seeing our curriculum grow here. Another thing I'd like to have here eventually is maybe like some competitive Vim Golf style challenges. Right now, let's check out some improvements to our quick open experience. As a reminder, you can get to quick open with Control P on Windows or Meta P on Mac. A common concern we had with this feature before was that the matching logic just wasn't up to par with what users had from Control P or FZF. We used a relatively naive regex matching strategy. Ryan went and factored out the scoring logic from VS Code and leveraged that here. So we get the initial set of results from RipGrep, and then we refine it with this VS Code scoring strategy. The result is a much more intuitive set of results. So typing around here, um, you just have to play with it and see, but um, the feedback we've had so far is that it's a big improvement over what we had previously. Another piece of functionality that Ryan added in a previous release that really goes well with this new scoring strategy is a refined behavior. So oftentimes I'll catch myself starting to type something, realize it's not specific enough, and then have to backspace and try typing again. And I realize I still haven't got what I'm looking for. So I can 
try again. And finally, I get to the file I'm looking for, this index and render, but it really felt like a lot more work than it should be to get there. So to address this, Ryan added refine behavior to our quick open experience. If I start typing index and realize it's not very refined, I can press space and type browser. This gets a first set of results matching index and then prunes that set of matches uh, filtering with browser. I can continue to refine until I get what I'm looking for. This is a much more natural and intuitive flow once you get the hang of it because I don't have to back up. I can just keep pressing space and typing until I've refined enough to find what I'm looking for. So this refine feature, along with our scoring improvements, really improves the quick open experience. Awesome work, Ryan. Thanks a lot. Now on the topic of files, if I jump over to the Explorer with sneak mode, Akin has really started to supercharge this experience and turn it from something very basic to something that you can use to get work done. The first piece of functionality I want to showcase, if I navigate over there, is that you can now add files and folders. So I can press Control F to add a folder, and it just showed up down here. I can add some nice animations so you can keep track of items as you add, add them. Let me jump down to that. I can also add a file inside by pressing Control E. So my new file. And now I have a new file inside my new folder. Maybe I don't like the name that I gave it, so I can press R to rename the file. I'm going to rename it to my new file too. And you can see the animation there. It picked up the rename. I can also press D to delete the file. But maybe I changed my mind and I want to bring it back. I can press U to undo that and bring the file back. I can also uh, yank and paste files and folders. So I can say, I want to move this my new file too to this other folder called new folder. I can press P and paste it there. So it's really cool that the Explorer is really becoming something functional and usable. Thanks a lot, Akin, for all your work here. It's great to see all the improvements to Explorer. I think next up, if we can have some search functionality, um, we'll have everything we need to have a really keyboard accessible, a useful experience here. All right, this uh, last big change I'm gonna tell you about in 0.3.4, is something I'm really excited about. This feature isn't on by default yet, but let me jump into my configuration. Manuel has put together an awesome PR for a WebGL render strategy for Oni. And it might surprise you that I actually had this on the entire time I was doing the demo. There's still some work left to be done. Uh, notably in some device configurations, we can actually crash because our texture atlas for characters isn't big enough we also don't support bold, italic characters or ligatures yet, but the WebGL render is actually really far along. I've been using it in my day-to-day -day work and it fixes several long-standing issues we've had with our canvas render. Things like cutoff characters, sub-pixel anti-aliasing issues, blurriness. Not only that, it's incredibly fast. Some of the canvas issues we have are due to incremental rendering because it's just not fast enough. But the WebGL strategy is so fast, it can always re-render the entire screen. Uh, just to give you an idea of the performance comparison, on my machine profiling, a full redraw on the canvas took about 24 milliseconds at the screen size. Whereas for the WebGL stack, it took about 2.5 milliseconds. So that's a really incredible speed up. So I'm excited about this for a few reasons. Um, number one is that it addresses some of these long-standing issues we've had with our canvas renderer. And number two, it really has the potential to take us to another level in terms of performance. If you look at our architecture, we have a native core, which is NeoVim, and then we have this WebGL render layer. This puts us in a spot where we can really push the limits of what an Electron app is capable of in terms of performance. When I look at the profiles with WebGL rendering enabled, a lot of the bottlenecks now are in our sort of glue code, the code that synchronizes buffer updates, talks to language services, renders our React layer, and there's a lot of low-hanging fruit to be optimized there. So I'm really optimistic about where we can go performance-wise. Uh, incredible work, Manuel. I really appreciate the change. It's awesome. So those are all the major big changes for 0 0.3.4. Uh, a couple other changes I wanted to quickly mention. Um, we, have a, oops, we have a few new themes. 
So Parker went and added uh, some nice first-class themes for us, Grubbox and Hybrid. So if you're interested in those, definitely check those out. Um, there's some other kind of bug fixes that were in 0 0.3.4. There's been a long-standing scroll issue uh, with MacBook touchpads where it was just too sensitive to do anything. Uh, we have a fix for that now. And there's another bug in Oni where we wouldn't work with NeoVim 0.3.0. So that bug's fixed now. Thanks a lot, Justin, for catching that. Um, looking forward for 0 0.4.0, I want to double down and focus on our configuration and plugin stories. I really want Oni to be easy and intuitive to configure extend and our configuration to be transparent. Um, I really like some of the prototyping and thinking Jordan's done on making configuration easier in Vim and I'd like to incorporate some of those ideas. It really should be easy to use Oni in whatever you, way you want, whether it's a minimal wrapper around Vim or some behemoth with language services and JavaScript plugins. Um, it should be modular and customizable and easy to understand where functionality is coming from. So that's where I want us to get for 0.4.0. Thanks so much for tuning in. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who contributed to this release, to the NeoVim team and all our backers. Your contributions really make a huge difference and I tremendously appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Catch you later.